wow, is the ratings on Supergirl so bad that it has ended the entire franchise? If you're not going to be here to maintain good ratings, then I suggest you just keep walking and throw yourself off the balcony. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and this is kind of my bi-weekly or every other week update on the superhero series and the superhero movies that seem to follow a particular goal in mind. When they lead with stunning and brave, much wokeness, they seem to fail. Now, if only there were a phrase for this that someone could coin that might lead to uh, a better description but i can't think of it right now now during this global lockdown everybody's at home people are consuming television more than ever they're consuming netflix hulu disney plus these memberships are going through the roof roku's memberships are going insanely high but for some reason people don't want to watch trash now again I will be very clear that my problem with Supergirl and Batwoman is not that they're women leads, it's that the writers are hacky, and the writers expect people to just tune in cuz woman, or cuz woman loves other woman. The shows are awful. They have a few redeeming factors, especially if you're really into the Arrowverse. It's kind of required reading for the superfan, but this article out of Cosmic News kind of points everything out. Fans tune out. Batwoman and Supergirl, amid everything going on right now, record TV ratings. So while everybody else is seeing record ratings, they're still not watching these shows. With so many people at home, TV ratings have been through the roof. But that is not the case for Batwoman and Supergirl, which actually have seen a decline in viewership. Interesting question. Could, could this possibly be an incentive for some mainstream media people to continue to pander panic. Maybe, maybe, but that's neither here nor there. Checking out the numbers prior to the lockdown, March reveals over 800,000 viewers for Batwoman and 650,000 for Supergirl, but the numbers are drastically down. Sunday's ep episode only saw 673 tune in for Batwoman, which follows last series week's series low, while only 605 tuned in for Supergirl. Regarding the record ratings for TV, and recent NFL draft scored a record TV audience. Cable TV news has soared. The Price is Right has its biggest audience in four years. Chicago Fire recorded its most popular episode in six years. Chicago Men and PD, largest in four years. All these shows are seeing record numbers. But for some reason, people aren't interested in Supergirl and Batwoman. And what would, what's actually interesting is, once everyone goes back to work... How far will the bottom drop out? It's been reported that TV viewership is up almost 20%, but again, no one is tuning into these shows on the CW. Both Batwoman and Supergirl have already been renewed for new seasons, but when you have an actual decline in viewership amid a huge spike, that has to be quite alarming, especially for debt-strapped AT&T, which owns the network and the characters. What's also ironic about Batwoman is when the CW first promoted the series, the CW and DC promoted it as anti-male and anti-Batman, but now we see they are introducing Batman villain Hush as the season concludes. Too little, too late. Well, yeah, of course. You have Batwoman ratings here. Starting in February at 815, down to 750, 749 holding, 765, then a huge drop to 634, and then a slight, slight up on May 3rd. But overall, you're just seeing a steady decline. Same with Supergirl. There's a better way to look at these ratings, actually. Um, if we use this site, you see, essentially, holding even is like a decline. We go back just, you know, in the last month, it goes from 815,000 to 750. It holds at 750, 760, then it drops down to 734, 740. So I'm guessing that Batwoman will probably end the season at maybe 600,000 when it started with 1.86 million, losing more than almost 70% of its initial viewership. When we look at Supergirl, the decline is a little less drastic, but it's still brutal, starting with 1.62 million down to 
607,000. So it has lost 50% of its viewers in just roughly 10 episodes. Obviously, the bottom here probably is in the 500,000s, uh, maybe 400,000. But it's crazy to me when tens of thousands of YouTubers upload videos every day that get 500,000 views and a huge production, a huge uh, network can't hold this many, can't even hold a half a million viewers. But it gets even worse as a new report via Bounding into Comics says, Supergirl ratings slip sharply amid everything being uh, amid the spike. Batwoman, Batwoman stays steady. We saw this. We looked at these numbers. Both shows air back to back on Sundays and have been renewed despite sagging ratings. Conversely, for the sake of argument, it's worth suggesting that the CW targets small, younger audience more comfortable with streaming their favorite shows on the next day. The network is very generous when it comes to the app, its content, and the five-week window it provides to watch a single episode. So yeah, certainly maybe you got people tuned in early at, you know, you tuned in 1.263 million and now you've dropped down to, um, you know, maybe 100,000 of those people are watching on the app now because they've seen commercials for it. It's entirely possible. But rumor, Supergirl movie canceled and Henry Cavill will be back as Superman. Well, Angry Joe's gonna be happy to hear this. F oh, no! Superman! No! F no! Superman! Superman is done! Superman is over with! You done f it up, WB! You done f it up! I'm sick of your stupid sh We mentioned the Supergirl film supposedly in development at Warner Brothers our, in our story about Batman, Batwoman and CW Supergirl's ratings. That production may be off the table now, but there's more. Henry Cavill could return to action. A rumor from Heroic Hollywood, an exclusive source of theirs claims Supergirl's big screen return is on hold until WB figures out what to do with Superman in a post-Justice League climate. It suggested that the studio is listening to fans who vocally want Cavill back since Superman's cameo, since the Superman cameo in Shazam. Well, I don't know if that even was Henry Cavill. I think somebody said it was. I mean, it was like a, a, a post-credit scene type of thing. Um, uh, so since Shazam, uh, Superman's cameo in Shazam, that was intended for the Witcher actor. The question is, how much time does Henry Cavill have? I mean, he's got the Witcher. Obviously, that's a long-term commitment. He's got this new Holmes and Watson spinoff with a female lead on Netflix as well. Is he going to have time to do a big-budget Superman film? I don't know. Um, Cavill made it clear multiple times that he wants to stay in the role. In fact, he knows the story he'd like to adapt. During a live stream landing, leading up to the release of Mission Impossible, Fallout, oh yeah, he was also in that, he pointed out to the 2005 story of Superman for Tomorrow by Br Brian Azzarello, Jim Lee, and Scott Williams. Millions of people have been, including Lois Lane, disappear while soups off world. He talks to a priest and saves the world in a most magnificent way. Stuff Cavill wanted to explore. The quote goes, there's a lot of weight to it. I don't know if there's the exact time I'd make a movie out, but I definitely take tones from it. You really get an insight into Superman's mind. He talks to a priest a lot. You see him trying to save the world in literally the most magnificent ways. That could make for an interesting Man of Steel 2 if we ever get it. And it might be better than alleged plans for Supergirl. Of course it will. Of course it will. I don't know why DC keeps refusing to give us a Superman film. I mean, what did we do to you, DC? We came out and we saw Superman. We came out and saw that film. So why won't you give us a sequel? Superman has one of the longest standing, fiercely loyal fandoms out there. Now... Announced in 2018, Supergirl was slated to begin filming this year. Prevailing wisdom was that it would softly reboot the recast Big Blue himself. Uh, David was a name that often came up. Everything turned, uh, everything going on outside right now turned the world upside down. It sounds like Supergirl was in trouble. Regardless, the first sign was on hold. Michael Shannon taken by surprise by the idea when interviewed by Australia recently. I'm sure he'd play Zod again. He said, wow, that's interesting. I swear to God, I'm not kidding. You are breaking news to me. 
I will have to look into that. Zod again? I don't know. It's been a while. I'm a little older and creakier now. I'm not sure if I could do all the moves. According to HH, the flick might have been the prequel to Man of Steel as opposed to standalone adventure with Brainiac as the villain. Questions would have arisen to why Earthlings remain in the dark about aliens and godlike beings in the 2010s, especially with an open Kryptonian pod that could be evidence Kara is out there somewhere, not letting her cousin or the Justice League know. Henry Cavill's fate could hinge on Dwayne Johnson, who we reported wants Cavill in Shazam, and Black Adam sequels to slug it out with Convict's magical anti-hero and ruler. The two share management and John in Johnson's ex-wife, Danny Garcia. Wow, he's still managed by her ex-wife. We'll see what that goes. As Cavill told Men's Health, we can count on him to be all in. Quote, I'm not giving up the role. There's a lot I have to give for Superman yet. A lot of storytelling to do. A lot of real true depths to the honesty of the character. I want to get into. I want to reflect the comic books. That's important to me. There's a lot of justice to be done for Superman. The status is you'll see that's the exact type of words this is why everyone loves henry cavill he clearly gets it he clearly respects the character and the fandom and this is exactly what you want to see out of your big budget superhero films not people just looking to cash in and say you know whatever i'll, I'll take my paycheck and i'll mail it in as we've seen many times with many actors and actresses in our favorite superhero franchises we see this with uh comic book characters uh with the artists taking over franchises and not paying respect to the initial fandom. We look at uh, Aubrey Citizen, for example, when he took over G.I. Joe, and he's like, I don't know how else you would call him, but he's a literal commie. I mean, he's a literal, he, he, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't like America. And this guy is in charge of the G.I. Joe comic book. Uh, and he, he drew them like healthy at all sizes, Angry Joe, or uh, Angry Joe. G.I. Joe was awful. Aubrey Citizen was hated by the, the fandom and he actively engaged against it. We see the writer Dana Schwartz, who gets She-Hulk actively engaging in antagonizing the comic book community, um, calling out other shows that people like South Park, for example, and, and just being all around an awful person. These are not people that we want to see get a hold of the franchise because they won't pay it with the respect that is needed. They view it as just a paycheck, and then they come in and they expect everyone to just respect them and love them because reasons. Henry Cavill is not that dude. He is a guy that I will continue to support in all his roles and to be honest with you i would never have watched the witcher tv show if he wasn't starring in it i was very very uninterested in the tv show and especially from early armor picks and stuff like that which ended up looking fine everything looked fine but uh since henry cavill was in it i'm i supported it and i'm glad i did the show's pretty decent uh it's it's not exactly what i would want but i'm interested in waiting for season two and seeing how things change so Tough luck, Supergirl. Maybe focus on good writing and good acting first and foremost, and maybe, just maybe, you'll get a good end product. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.